Hi folks, I want to do a little video to show you some of the more advanced features on the telemetry of the Tyrannus radio. Um, telemetry is one of the most important features that one of the reasons I like this radio so much because it gives you a lot of information about what's going on in the air um, and it gives me a lot of peace of mind as well. So I'm going to show you how to track your cell voltages on your uh, battery. I'm going to show you how to track your signal strength, so RSSI, between the transmitter and the receiver and also how to track your altitude. Um, and yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is the cell voltage meter. Um, this one is one of the smart port ones, which is a bit newer, and I suggest you get that if you have an X8R. Um, as you can see, I've got it hooked into the balance port of my battery, and it's showing 4S, and it's also showing uh, the battery voltages for each cell. It's really important that when you plug it in, you check that you have got 4S because sometimes if the plug doesn't go in 100% all the way to each pin, it will initialize and detect only three cells or sometimes only two cells. So obviously you don't want to only be monitoring two of your four cells, so make sure you've got or 4S showing up on the screen after you plug it in. Okay, so now that I have my LiPo's balance port hooked into the cell meter, um, I'm gonna connect the battery on the airframe. I've already got the Tyrannus switched on and you heard it complaining about zero volts. That's one of my one of my alerts, which I'll get to in a minute. So now that that's hooked up, um, you should be getting telemetry straight away. Um, you shouldn't need to do any configuration other than hooking up the smart port. Um, to check that you're getting telemetry down, if you press and hold the page button for a second, it'll take you to the telemetry screen. And I'll just zoom in a bit here so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm talking about. So, a bit of information on the way Tyrannus refers to different types of cells. Um, there is cell and cells. The first one, cell, refers to the lowest cell, lowest battery cell of all of the uh, cells being monitored. So in my case, the lowest cell of my four cell pack is running at 3.98 volts. Um, you've also got cells with an S, which is the total pack voltage. The one you want to be monitoring all the time is cell, because we're always interested in the lowest cell voltage. Um, Horizon mode. You always want to be tracking this, because even if your pack voltage is good, you can have a, a single cell drop below um, your good voltage, and, and if that happens, you're going to have a bad time. So um, when you're setting up your alerts, make sure you always use cell as the, uh, as the amount to track. Press three or four times, and you'll get into this screen. And on the right, you'll notice here there's the individual cell voltages for each cell. So you, as part of my pre-flight checks before I fly, I always check that I'm getting all four cells because you want to make sure that you're going to have all the cells monitored during your flight. Sometimes I've had it where even though on the actual uh, uh, voltmeter I'm getting all four cells, the radio only actually picks up maybe three. Um, and once again, power selecting the radio fixes that. So I mean, it's probably something that may have been fixed with the firmware update. This is quite an old firmware I'm running on this. So some of these bugs may have been fixed, but if you are, if you do come across these weird things, um, that way you know how to deal with them. So, so now that we've checked that we've got all four cells coming up over here, we can start to set up rules to do stuff based on the information that we've, we're getting from the telemetry. And it's quite simple to do that. Um, if you press the page button, sorry, if you press the menu button and then the page button, so menu will take you into your model selection and then page will page through the individual model setup screens. Um, so we want to head through to the custom switches section. Here we go, which is page 10 in my in my firmware edition. Up the top here you can see page 10. Um, so right now custom switch one I have set up, um, you can see I've got A is equals less than X. So um, A is the thing we're monitoring. So in this case, A will be the next field, which in this case, we've got it set to cell. Um, so A is gonna be whatever is in this column here, running down the middle. So what I'm saying is, if A is less than X, and X is the third field, which is this column over here, um, then do do a thing. And, and by doing a thing, I mean, what it'll do is it will activate this custom switch. So it's a bit like flicking a switch, flicking one of your, one of your physical switches, which I can't quite show you. A bit like flicking one of these switches, except virtually. So you can make as many of these as you want. Uh, a little trick 
to make things a bit quicker when you're setting up a custom function, or this, this actually works on any part of the radio. If you want to use a switch, if you highlight the switch, rather than going up and down through all the different switches, as you can see, and just trying to find the one you want, if you simply, and I'll zoom out again, if you simply flick the switch, it will highlight it for you. It will, it will pick the current setting. So if I flick this back down to middle, Horizon mode. you notice it goes to, well sorry, this is up, sorry. I go back to middle, there's middle, Three, and there's down. So that speeds things up if you're trying to set up um, a new custom switch. Okay, so we can, we can demonstrate, or we can test whether or not this is working simply by increasing the threshold to a point where it's, it's gonna definitely be active. So I know right now that the, the cell voltage is roughly around four volts. So if I press enter and highlight this and simply increase this number to above four right, volts, right. it should activate. And when it activates, you'll notice that the custom switch line will go bold. And that means that the, the switch, and I say inverted commas switch, is, is active. So, 3.9 okay. volts. So it's detecting it's below 4.12 volts. It's now bolded, the number. So we know that that's working. So that's a good way to test to see if your, if your logic is working. Now we can set up something that will do uh, an action based on this custom switch being active. So to do that, to set up an action, we press page again and we get to custom functions. Now, there's already quite a lot in here preloaded from MultiWii, so there's things like you know play, track, angle mode, manual mode, etc. These are for all of my various switches. So what I've done is, if we scroll down far enough, there'll be, there'll be blank spots. Uh, and in my case, uh, the blank spots started at around about 10. Um, so I have created a new cu a custom function called CF10, uh, and I've set the switch or the the condition to be CS1. So that's the custom right, switch right. we set up before, and we're saying if custom switch is active, play sound, siren. So that's going to make a little whoop whoop noise, which is going to alert me, and then and, and it'll go down this it'll it'll go down the path and it'll uh, it'll play each of it'll, it'll do each of these steps in sequence. So whichever one is first, it'll do first and then it'll do the second thing and, and so forth. So you can set up logic in that way. Second one is play value cell. So it's going to play a sound, the siren, and then it's gonna play, uh, it's gonna read me the cell voltage, okay? And the number over here is 15 seconds. So it's gonna wait 15 seconds in between doing that each time. So it'll play the sound, uh, tell me the cell voltage, then wait 15 seconds. And then if the custom switch is still active, which it probably would be, it will then read it to me again. So it's gonna keep alerting me and keep reading me the cell voltage every 15 seconds. So that's it. So now you've got cell by cell telemetry and you've got an alert set up which will inform you if your cell pack gets below 3.58 volts. This has saved me a lot. Um, this has saved me crashing and it's also saved me killing batteries. So I really recommend that you set this up. It's worth the $20 or however much the uh, cell meter is. Okay, so on to the next item of telemetry, which I think is really important to have, and that's your RSSI. Um, and RSSI is basically um, your signal strength. Very basically, it's your signal strength from your transmitter, so the Tyrannus, to your receiver. Um, and it, it works this out by basically analyzing packet loss. Um, because when you start flying uh, far away, uh, you want to know when you're getting a bit too far and you want to be able to bring it back before it kicks into fail safe. So I've got a custom switch again, CS2, which is set to RSSI and I've right now got it set to 45. Um, and what I find is, is that is what I found is that 45 is around the point where I start to lose video anyway. So when I'm so far out of range that I'm starting to lose video is when I also start to lose my transmitter link or when it starts to get a bit low. Um, so I, I, once again, I fly pretty safe, so 45 is probably quite high, you can probably go lower than that, but um, I like to know when I'm getting to the edge of my range, or I also like to know if there's some kind of interference, so this way you're going to be aware if there's some interference. Um, if we go to the next page, I've once again set up a custom function down the bottom here, which will, uh, here we go, custom function 6, and I've said if custom switch 2 is active, play sound siren, play value RSSI. So if the signal strength gets too low, it's going to alert me and it's gonna read me the RSSI. It'll say something like 41 dB, 49, 49 dB or whatever. So that way then I'm informed as to whether or not there's a problem. 
Okay, you're probably getting the hang of this by now, but the third item I want to talk about is the variometer or altitude. So what I want to know is, I obviously don't want to go above the height ceiling, um, which is in Australia 120 meters or 400 feet. So I've got set up on the custom switches screen again, a custom switch which says if A being whatever, whatever this is, while the camera goes crazy, if A being whatever this is, is above X, then activate custom switch three. And I've set it to 124 meters. So if I'm you know, not paying attention to my on-screen display and I go a bit too high, it's gonna alert me. If I go to the next screen, we can scroll down here and take a look. Custom switch three is play value altitude. So it's gonna start reading me my altitude and, and making me pay attention to the fact that the altitude is too high. Um, while on the subject of uh, the variometer, you can set up a switch which will play sound uh, or it will play a tone as you go up and down. So right now I've got this set up on switch G, which is uh, for me, this switch in the top right here. Uh, and I've actually got a couple of different settings set up on this, but I'll get to that. So right now it's in its down position. If I flick this to the middle, uh, you'll start to hear it beep. And this is the variometer. So if I pick up the airframe now and move it up, you notice it's beeping up. If I move it down, well, I'm not moving it enough to make it uh, make a significant tone change. But if you were decreasing an altitude at say a meter a second, which is fairly common when you're flying at speed, you would hear it make a down tone. It would make a, a, a lower tone. And if you were increasing altitude, you get an upper tone. So that's, um, that's about it in terms of setting up telemetry. Um, I think those three are the most important ones. Well, definitely the, the voltage meter is the most important one. Um, you really want to have that in place to protect, you know, your airframe and also your batteries. You're going to get a much longer life out of your batteries if you use that. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about any of that, feel free to let me know. Um, I hope this has helped you. And uh, hopefully if you have any other questions, I can make some more videos. Thanks.